Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. We Like the 1% focuses on individuals and entrepreneurs, and even though it's International Women's Day today, way less than 1% of women are ever on any sort of rich list. Joining me to discuss why this might be the case is a white male, Jay Fidel, and an Asian female, Carol Mon Lee. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Polly. <laughs> Otherwise known as the founder and president of Think Tech Hawaii and the executive vice president of Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, Carol is a, a, a recent addition to this show because uh, all my guests thus far, this is my last show for We Like the 1%, and my last show for Outside In was yesterday. So all of my guests uh, just turned out, it happened to be the case that they were male. So I thought on International Women's Day, I should have a female guest. At least one. So <laughs> today uh, we're going to discuss a uh, little bit about the Me Too movement, a uh, little bit because this is uh, the show about individuals and entrepreneurs, a little bit about women and entrepreneurship, and why it might be the case that when you look on, say, the Forbes list or any sort of rich list, most of the females listed on there will have inherited their wealth, or it's because their father set up the business, or their husband set up the business. It's very rare that you get a woman who is a self-made billionaire. So we know a lot of women go into law, they go into medicine, they're in the I profession. It's happening more and more. Yes, Pauline. I know, yeah, but you know, you look still around, you small find numbers. The, you know, the the the, 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 uh, the, ch the chains are off. The chains are off, and women can do CEO things on national companies, uh, international companies. Every time you look, there's a woman being promoted to CEO of a national company. But we're making going, uku bucks, by the way. But we're headed for the top, okay? Where well, this is the very top. This is serious things: oil and gas, large-scale manufacturing, yeah. mining, it's the happening. serious things. It's yeah. happening. It was very slowly. Very it's getting slowly. there, mm -hmm. but it's still uh, a numbers game. So what I wanted to preface the show, I just wanted to bring up some ideas, not to cause offense to anybody, but just to have a discussion. I got about, two questions. Yes. For you, yeah. mm -hmm. One one is, uh, you know, what is this one percent? Why you you called the show? Uh, you know, we like it. The one percent. What, what you didn't watch mean? the promo. You didn't watch the promo uh, for my nobody show. Nobody watched the promo. Nobody oh, knew about okay, you at the time. Fine. So it's time it's to refresh pro, everybody. Pro individualist and pro-capitalist. So we focus on uh, business people, uh, and uh, I'm interested in the 1%. Now, the billionaire class what is, is different. 1% of what? what? Uh, it's not like some solution that Sherlock Holmes does, you know? Capitalism, you know, oh, the capitalism. Pe people who are I mean, the, the richest, the richest. Well, the richest is seven zeros and a one. That's the zero, 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 one. That's the billionaire okay. class. Yeah, That's okay. different. So the 1% are people who set up their own companies, are successful. Uh, what causes them to be successful? Are you talking money or power? What are you talking about? Well, you should watch my shows. I don't know why you're asking yeah. me all these oh, questions. Stop everything. <laughs> so right, I think I think I got my answer. It's so, a little vague, my answer, to, but we'll we'll go with that. Next, move, next question. Yes, to move. Second yes, question. Mm -hmm. Okay, you you call this uh, what? Me too. Boo hoo. Boo hoo. Yes. So I don't. I'm, and as a I'm, white male, I need a yes. definition in your perception of okay. what me too is. Okay. And then I like a, a, a discussion of what you mean, what are the parameters here in this show, if you're talking about boo-hoo, boo-hoo sounds like it's, <laughs> you know, it's like we're sorry about yes. Me Too, is that, is that what it is? Uh, well, first of all, uh, I don't really understand the Me Too movement, I don't know what it actually accomplishes. Uh, now, I, I am a person with forward momentum, I like end results, I don't like wastes of time, so... Um, are you one of those women <laughs> CEO people we've been hearing about? No, 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 well, did answer your question. She's one of those women. The boo, -hoo, the boo. She's going incognito, but we know her secret. Jay, we don't have a lot of time on the show, so the boohoo. To answer your question, the boohoo element is, uh, I think it's it kind of fosters this scenario of victimhood, this social justice warrior playing the victim thing. Which, you mean the the women are victims. Yeah. And yeah. boo but is making a, a drama out of, of it. Victim. See, I don't like drama, so I don't like people making a drama out of things. I wish they would just whatever happened to you, because people came from all sorts of horrible circumstances in the past. Most people came to America and they made a life for themselves. They worked very hard, and within a generation or two, they became middle class and upper middle class, and their children became more uh, prosperous than they were. So making a victim of yourself 
or blaming your failures or lack of being successful on some other entity that is imaginary, or if it, even if it did actually happen to you, you just move forward, right? I don't understand what this is accomplishing, because people have been aware of sexual harassment for a long time, but making a drama out of it, I don't know how it helps There's them. There's something really cynical in saying boo <laughs> What do you think, Carol? Well, uh, let, let her speak. Let the Asian female well, speak. Well, absolutely. There's been, it, it, there's been sexual harassment, sexual abuse. There's been gender discrimination. There's mm -hmm. been racial discrimination, uh, biases forever. Yes. So what different movements do mm -hmm. are create an awareness and hopefully promote education and a change in, in behavior. So... We started with, let's say, the civil rights movement in the 60s mm -hmm. and 50s, right? So now, here we are 50 plus years later, civil rights movement. Yes, indeed, we as a community, as a country, are more aware of a lot of these issues. But do we actually see a major improvement in changes? And there'd be a lot of people in our country would say, no, things are not that much better than they were 50 years ago. So change is very slow. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you go forward sure. and you go backward and slow. And it's the same thing, I think, with gender issues, with sexual harassment, with um, sexual abuse, uh, with, you know, the word equality is kind of a, um, uh, a misnomer because really it's more about fairness, right? Mm -hmm. Equal opportunity, but fairness. Uh, so again, the Me Too movement is just another opening of the door, creation of the awareness. It's not in and of itself, just because it was uh, started by the awareness of the sexual abuse by one person, in this case, Harvey Weinstein, and yes. his huge powers. And it's not just <coughs> limited to women in entertainment and big, powerful men. It happens every single day. Of course. Now, my thinking behind it is, and thank you for giving your perspective on that, uh, my, my thinking is, before we get to Harvey Weinstein and the potted plant and all that sort of thing, um, I wanted to highlight a few characteristics that are noticeable. And there are some YouTube channels that actually people can go to, such as MGTOW. This is men going their own way, which I find very entertaining. You know, it, it does uh, bring into light some characteristics of the differences between men and women and how they operate in business. And one of the things that I agree with, actually, is uh, if you have a scenario where, let's say, a female is was being harassed or is being harassed, then uh, it, I think if you're really successful or talented or really want to do what you want, you will become successful somehow. It's how badly the person wants it. And I always was curious as to know why women don't form organizations with each other. They don't seem to be able to coagulate as easily as men can. And the example- Maybe in the context of a business organization. Yes, it, or I, I don't know any others. I, I'm not in the oh, medical field. A lot field. of women's organizations yeah. around the country. Yeah, and sure. In they, they're organizations, but in my experience, I'm just talking from my experience. I can't speak for Carol's experience or other females' experience. And other, other females might have the same experience as I have encountered. I work mostly with men because a lot of things I, uh, I'm engaged with are scientific, and that's not to say women aren't in science, but it's a numbers game. There are far more men in scientific areas than women, and that's just a fact, okay? Uh, I'm not saying there isn't a capacity. It's just as things are at the moment, that is a fact. Now, what I notice, and this is an expression that is sometimes used, and this is the tagline I used for the show, is that women can't form phalanx. And a lot of people don't know what that means. Uh, so phalanx is a military formation, and this was devised by the ancient Greeks. And what it was in the ancient Greek formation was a rectangle, and every Greek soldier had a spear and a shield. And what happens in a phalanx is that they lock shields and point the spears against a common enemy. And the metaphor in the corporate environment for that, and when you say women can't form phalanx, it means a man can be jealous. Men can be jealous and competitive with other males. But when there is a crucial issue that affects the business, they'll forget about that. They'll wipe it out of their minds and, and unite together to meet a certain objective. I don't think, and I'm only speaking from my experience, that women can do that as easily. They don't seem to get along as easily because they have various passive aggressive behaviors that I've observed. Uh, I like to be, I'm a direct person, so I like people to be upfront with me if there's something wrong. Men seem to be more easily able to do that in my experience, whereas women, they sort of go behind your back, and I don't like that kind of behavior. Are, are you so, crossing, are you conflating all cultures in the world here? No. Just Western um, culture, European culture, American, uh, what? Uh, I think it depends on, it always depends on the person, and I keep repeating myself, 
it's only in my experience that whatever these YouTube channels like Men Going Their Own Way are pointing out, I'm saying I agree with some of the things they're saying. They're not all wrong. Because I don't like this anti-male movement that's going on. Uh, I think if women want to be successful, well, let them form alliances with each other if they're being stopped. But I don't think anybody's technically stopping anyone. I think they're blaming somebody else for their failure. Can I investigate with yeah. you guys um, how the Me Too movement started mm -hmm. um, you know I mean women's lib has been around uh, you know as you mentioned Car Carol since, since, the 60s. since the 60s mm -hmm. and uh, there were you know hero women who wrote books and made speeches and it did catch fire I mean it was a, it was a big strain in American American awareness I'm not sure how much effect it had but I think it had some effect oh, over definitely. the years you know I, I would say uh, people insisted on it and it, it still exists you know it, it existed until and, and I would say it existed until the birth of, of the Me Too movement, mm -hmm. which I'll, I'll throw out a thought to you. Mm -hmm. The Me Too movement was born on January 20th, 2017. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it had a lot to do with Donald Trump and his inauguration and the women's march that took place at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a reawakening. It was a re a re a repackaging somehow of women's lib in general mm -hmm. it was another you know story it was before Harvey Weinstein too mm -hmm. before him way before him mm -hmm. um, and I think it was you know it caught on because Trump is a misogynist um, and uh, you know he doesn't like women much actually and remember the bus don't forget the bus mm -hmm. um, and so I think women were getting together on this and it was it was a movement waiting for an iconic event mm -hmm. and presto Harvey okay? now, 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 it, now it pops right out okay yeah. and then it, then it expands from that I mean I would like your view of this in terms of the dynamic of what happened so Harvey comes and that was plain and simple sexual harassment in the old-fashioned classical mm -hmm. sense um, you know that we we have all heard about but maybe we don't know too much about it we don't know people necessarily who would tell us that they were involved in such incidents and um, now it's it's emancipation of the information about those incidents okay and it started out with Harvey and it went from Harvey to a whole re-examination, if you will, of the relationship in culture between men and women in this country and, as it works out, around the world. You know, I went to Australia. This mm -hmm. issue exists in Australia. It must exist everywhere now. It does exist. Harvey has had a profound effect on the issue around the world. Well, and I that is interesting. Okay. The thing is, it didn't just start with Harvey. Of course, it's been around forever. But you'll recall Bill Cosby, Roger Ailes. There have been a number of people in the media that have been affected. It's just that no one at his level, at Harvey Weinstein's level, with his power, his notoriety, his um, uh, wealth, uh, finally getting caught. And so that's what I think I'm caught the attention. I remember whether Ailes and uh, that was before. Bill um, Cosby, O'Reilly, O'Reilly, that was before at, at Fox Weinstein. News, whatever. Um, that, that was before. Yeah. So this is all waiting yeah. to happen. The, it was catalytic what happened with Harvey Weinstein. Just to play a little bit of a devil's advocate, um, I understand what Harvey Weinstein did was wrong, obviously. That's, that's um, very clear. However, um, I'm curious about the women um, going into the hotel room for a business meeting. I find that very peculiar, unless the woman is particularly naive. I would never have um, a business meeting in a man's hotel room. Well, um, these were young women in their 20s. Sure, there's always an excuse. See, there's always yeah, an excuse. Yeah. And in the ancient world, in ancient Rome, in ancient Japan, acting, the profession of acting has always been associated with prostitution. I mean, this is not something new. Uh, the upper classes in ancient Rome, the patricians were horrified when uh, Nero or some other emperor, they wanted to act on stage because that was something only lower class peasants did. And the, the acting, if you say you're an artist, even in some cultures in the upper circles today, if you say you're an artist or an actor or an actress, that means you're a person with loose morals. Well, so it's always been the, the case. The case no, 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 in I'm America? Just, I'm just saying there's a... No, because everybody wants to be famous here, and that's very shallow. Well, so, I, don't, um, I disagree with that, too. But yeah. I can't generalize and say that just because you're a young actor or actress yeah. and you choose to have a meeting with somebody who is powerful, who has a great possible influence over your career, in and of itself means that you are opening yourselves up to sexual... Uh, but but you're correct in that they're young, and I would add to that naive, because 
if you study, if you look at people who are fascinated by the areas of acting, because it's escapism, it's not being yourself, you're being somebody else, and people who are fascinated by psychology or the study of psychology, they tend to be very insecure and damaged people. <laughs> okay, I don't uh, agree in, with in the generalization. I'd like to yeah. clarify one thing. Most you're, people are aware of that. You're creating yeah, most... this kind of um, mm -hmm. uniform scenario. Mm -hmm. right. um, and in fact, every scenario is different. Every one of these se sexual harassment guys is different. Their MOs are different. Mm -hmm. And the women who were you know, snared in, in the sexual harassment, they were different. They were there for different reasons. Some of them, you know, were completely um, victims. Mm -hmm. And they, didn't, they were snared, you know, against their will, absolutely against their will. Mm -hmm. And whether it was rape or, or just yeah. harassment, uh, you know, without rape, um, uh, they were brought into it against their better judgment, against their will. And they could have avoided it, but they didn't avoid it. Okay. Yeah. okay? And, and then, you get the other, then you get the there. other kind, yeah. okay? The other kind who may have suspected there was something in that hotel room. Well, who may have actually wanted to seduce him. Yes. There's yes. absolutely yeah. women. There's a range. So it's, it's a range. And there are men it's who a, want to seduce it's women. It's a wide range of possibilities mm -hmm. of right. scenarios. And, in the, and in, in, we should not characterize them as a yeah. single uniform, you know, uh, experience. It's just an observation I I've made about people who are fascinated by acting and wanting yeah. to be famous and interested in psychology. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's a little back pattern. Yeah. To your um, uh, title about women and the phalanx, mm -hmm. and I wanted to ask you: In Greece, were those all men who were in the Greek of course, army? Of course. Okay. The, the so women had some power, but uh, in the army, I mean, physically, the men are physically men are stronger. Yeah. Yes, physically. exactly. So therefore, the measure of how the phalanx should work is based on white. Uh, white, right, because they are Greek men, uh, men, right? So their measure of success is based on how that phalanx works. And yet women could have come to a different way of measuring success uh, or winning the war that didn't include this phalanx. It could yeah. have been some other the, the phalanx I was you using. You don't have to have a phalanx. The phalanx exactly. I was using as a metaphor for mm -hmm. how women and men behave differently in a corporate and pressure filled environment. And the, the thing I'm angered about, what's happening is this anti male movement, which I, if, if, we, if men are too busy moving civilization forward, they're not busy trying to stop something. What is some, the anti male mm -hmm. movement? What yeah. is that? Well, it seems. My perception is that this Me Too is part of this hatred of men or um, this. Uh, while things go wrong, you don't there think is it's sexual. just a further expression of women's lib. I, you I think it's more than that. I think that it's a little bit more than that, and th there are various YouTube channels by men who are expressing this. That's all I'm bringing to light because yeah. you don't hear the other side sometimes. Yeah. So uh, I'm just uh, I'm not saying I agree with everything. It's right. just an observation I'm making. And you know, I, I it I, seems to be divisive. It I, seems I, to be I separating agree that men and women. There is a little bit of yeah. a divisiveness, mm -hmm. and I'm yeah. protective of Jay as a white male to yeah. make sure that he doesn't get <laughs> harmed in all this. And what I see, though, and I and Carol, <laughs> and the reality, what I what I see is that as in every major seismic change, sometimes we overreact. On one, if the center is the right place to be, and we've always been too far to one direction, which is too much sexism, too much uh, racial biases and discrimination, right now maybe we're in a position where we have overcompensated, and now where we should be, where men and women, uh, black, white, red race, old and young, disabled and, and, and fully capable of functioning, be equally treated or fairly treated. We're not there right now because we're compensating too much on the other side. And in this case, that means that the white male, who has been mostly the perpetrators in all these sexual harassment cases that have come up have been negatively affected. I'm sure other kind of men well, perpetrate sexual harassment. And I think we'll come back to the center. Yes, I think yeah. that's my yeah, point. Well, that's a very interesting approach. I would like and it I, to come back to the and center. And you know, you have a social disruption here. Exactly. And this disruption, you know, as any good and valid social disruption, it, it goes too far sometimes. It doesn't go far enough other times. Right. Uh, it's it's, it's self-disruptive, isn't it? Hmm. So my question, and really I think you need to cover this as a host of this discussion, Pauline, <laughs> is, you know, what has happened since Harvey? In fact, what has happened since I, January 20th? I don't see much change, What actually. is the dynamic? Well, no, I, I think I there's got to be a lot of change going yet. on. Okay. There's different what? scenarios are popping up. What? You know, w women who, you know, were not at all in the kind of spider web that Harvey Weinstein has mm. created, you know, in, in his studio and all that. Um, women who have not been nearly as, as much harassed, if you will, 
have come forward. When we say Me Too, we're, we're finding people who have come, who have now recently come forward, who we would not have considered in the Harvey Weinstein well, scenario. Let's talk okay. about the Dr. Uh, Nasser, like, like yes, uh, Larry the gymnast, Nasser, yes. the gymnast who <clears throat> abused women and now we know men, mm -hmm. young men athletes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so where years ago, and obviously they kept silent all these years thinking perhaps it was their fault, it was too shameful. Here was this person, this doctor who was well-known and, and admired. Uh, how could he be doing something wrong? So finally, a movement like Me Too gives them the sense of, my voice is worth hearing. I have confidence in what I actually feel. And it gives them that strength to go for it. Is that bad? No, sure. that's good. The doctor is a good, good example, but we also have to be aware of women who are doing this for attention seeking and doing false claims. You have to always be on the other side. It's, it's in the rainbow. It's They're in not the all telling the truth. But it's so, true yeah. so we have lots of yeah. different scenarios mm -hmm. going on. So I mean, I would suggest to you guys that there is a, a, a dynamic happening. The dynamic started arguably in you know, the expansion of this whole notion on January 20th, largely because of Trump. Trump is still in office and still doing things. He's never been brought to the carpet on this issue, right? Never. And I think a lot of women are sort of playing him out as a, as a proxy. This is a proxy for going after Trump. Um, this is their way of expressing the, the issue that he, that he is not resolving. And there are other proxies, other situations like this that are similar, including white, white supremacy and all those things that, that he has created. So there's a dynamic. And what I'm really asking is, where is this dynamic going? Uh, is it, is, is the, it going to be spent soon? Because the press moves on and distraction yeah. distracts yeah. distraction. So at the end of the day, are we going to be having this conversation in 60 days or 90 days? Or will something else come up uh, that marginalizes it? Will it go under the waves? And, and I, I really don't have the sense that this is a permanent kind of fixture. I have a sense that this is a, something that will last a, a certain ephemeral length of time and then we'll have some other distraction. But I would like to think that it's, it has seeped down to a next level, which is you find now businesses, corporations, um, small employees, employers are doing education, self-reflection. What have we been doing that has caused this situation? What can we change? How can we educate not just the, the women, but the women and the men and their customers and the relationships and their policies and their and, and everything? So I think that is good. And that change, even though it might be very slow and there might be times where it goes backwards, it's, it's moving forward. Yeah, but perhaps it's the uh, approach because uh, I, by and large, deal mostly with professional men. And the people who have caused most problems to me are other women. So there's that scenario as well. Uh, and and that's your then that's, that's my your experience. experience. That's been and my experience, mine. and your experience is different. So yeah. do you want to tell people sure. a little bit about that? You know, as I said, I came of age in the '60s and '70s. I went to law school in the '70s when there were 15 percent women in my mm -hmm. class. Um, when I moved to Hawaii, I was the first president of an organization called Hawaii Women Lawyers. And that organization still in, is in existence. Our goal is actually someday to be not necessary because yeah. we don't have Hawaii men lawyers. No. We have Hawaii women lawyers because there's been a need to have a, an organization that represents women to promote women as judges, as partners, as department, cabinet um, uh, heads. Uh, and we've done all that. We go and testify and we bring applications for it and we promote uh, opportunities yeah. for women but to are, develop You're leadership. talking about a, a, a motion, a movement rather, that right. has existed for 50 years or 60 and it has certain traction. Yeah. And you've been actually in, 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 in this state, you've been Involved an important in person in all of that. Well, but what, that's not what happened on January 20th and it's not right. what happened um, with Harvey Weinstein and his, and his, his progeny. Um, what's happened is, is, is that raw sex got involved here. Raw sex. It isn't, I mean, you can say power and sex is all the same, but it's not. Um, the reality is, just like in Spotlight and the Catholic Church, you know, and those young boys mm -hmm. and the priests and all that stuff, which is still a... It's still a, going a, on. It's yeah. still, you know, it's terrible, still going on. All over and the it's world. still being mm -hmm. discovered. And I suppose the, the change, if we're looking for sea changes, is that people are less reluctant to come forward. Okay, and that's something. But bottom line is, I think there's a distinction between the, the women's liberation movement, equality of women, you know, fair pay and whatever, mm -hmm. whatever it is in, in corporate life. You're talking about corporate life mm -hmm. and the, the phalanx issue and yeah. all that. The reality is, this is about sex. This is about, this is about inappropriate sexual conduct. 
And, and that is, a, it's almost like another discussion. Yes, it is, yeah. So uh, that's the Me Too part. So the other discussion, because we want to talk about female entrepreneurship, is that one of the things I wanted to combine these concepts is because I get annoyed when it's almost as if, and Bill Burr, the comedian, talks about this a lot, it's almost as if women, they kind of are insulting or say something, or they, they're not responsible for their actions. They kind of regress into being a little girl. So what I noticed is that, uh, you know, they asked Elon Musk, they said, where did you learn how to design a rocket? He said, well, I went to the library and I read a book about rockets and I designed a rocket. So it's not as if there's a boogeyman that's stopping women from doing what they want. Women have been left alone for decades now, but I don't see a lot of them going to the library and learning how to design a rocket. It, it doesn't seem to be the hard wiring in most females. I would say in a small percentage of females, yes, that exists, and you shouldn't stop those people. But Is that forcing, your definition of success? But for, no, I'm just giving an example. Okay. I'm just giving an example of Elon Musk. Um, somehow, uh, because in my observation, and you might disagree, but a lot of people have come to the conclusion the best chefs are male. The best, it seems like the men have a creative force that the women lack. My subject is Freemasonry. Women are Freemasons as well in certain jurisdictions, but they didn't invent their own ritual. They just copy the male one. So um, this is, has been my observation that Number one, nobody's stopping technically people from doing anything. If you really want to do something, you will make it happen. And the other thing is, there is a lack of a creativity. There are some, seem to be, appear to be some things that the male has naturally, and the female has other characteristics that might be useful, but it's not the same as the males. That's all I'm saying. But are you basing a value judgment on which is better? No, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm okay. just saying to force women, that we need more women in oil and gas. Well, I don't think they're interested in heading up oil and gas companies. There may be a few, though. They're, okay, that's fine, mm -hmm. but there are a few. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not, a, I, it's not the vast know. majority of the female population that wants What's that got to, to do but, with the Me Too movement? Oh, we, we shifted the subject. I'm I going so. into the entrepreneurship, <laughs> so, as I mentioned before I did it. So. Um, well, but that's not the show here today, is it, Pauline? Oh, well, it's the combination of it because okay. Um, okay. I just want to make because that of the point. theme, because of the point. theme of the uh, because show. Because to me, that is an underlying process, an underlying movement that's been happening, and there are fits and starts, and there's progress, and maybe not so much. But what we really have, the, the, the news of the moment, if you will, mm -hmm. um, the one that pops up on the front page is not about that. Yeah. It's about inappropriate sexual conduct. And, sure. and I think the discussion there is more about the difference between men and women, about yeah. our, our culture, how, how we are brought up in our culture, how we are taught to think about sex, both sides, uh, and how we express ourselves in the frustration of not being able to realize you know, the biological implications, impulses of our sexual gender. And I think it's also the presentation of it, because if you have women wearing pussy hats and dressing up like vaginas, I think men just laugh at that and think they're silly. And sometimes there's a contradiction in the behavior where if Ali Reisman, she was abused by this doctor, and then she poses nude, it confuses men when women do things like that, because it... You know, men think a particular it's a way. It's a mixed signal, isn't it? It's a mixed signal, and men get really confused by those mixed signals, and that's all I'm saying. And unfortunately, we don't have more time to go into this, but maybe we can pick it up on uh, next year's uh, International <laughs> Women's Day. Well, hold but, that thought. But thank you, thank you, white male and Asian female, for being my guest. So we're politically correct somewhat on this show. And this is my last show for this year on We Like the 1%, and I'll see you next year for more of We Like the 1% every Thursday at 11 a.m. Until then, safe travels and aloha.